get older, the prostate gland, causes semen to be whole to be slightly basic and helps neutralize the acid environment. Wow! You have this acid, which is actually made by very good bacteria inside the vagina, to keeping these other things out, but prostate fluid neutralizes it, makes it basically neutral of the sperm. It says this right here, sperm are very sluggish, the last sentence, under acidic conditions. Semen also contains a chemical called seminal plasmin, which has bacteriostatic properties. It means it inhibits bacteria. Hang on to that thought. It's going to become important in just a second. The seminal vesicles right there, it talks about they contribute large amounts of fructose, the big bowl print, which provides energy for the sperm. The, these hormone-like compounds, once in the female reproductive tract, stimulate contractions of the uterus muscles, which help move the semen up the uterus. Amazing. Making it easier for them to get to the egg. And then... Here's another one. Seminal plasmin contains a variety of potentially antigenic substances. I'll, I'll explain this, particularly enzymes. And then it says here in the next phrase, several potentially important immunoinhibitory substances have been, have been detected in seminal plasma. One of these substances has broad spectrum immunosuppressive effects on the lymphocyte function in the vitro, including blocking proliferation of the T cells. Now, what does that mean? That means inside mom's uterus, she's got those attack cells. They're swimming around looking for foreign invaders. Well, inside these seminal fluids, it has a compound which temporarily suppresses that immune response and blunts it for the most part. So that her, blood, her white cells are not going to go in and just wipe out all of the sperm right then. So this is an amazing thing. It's just locally, locally suppressing her immune response. Now, of course, that would leave her open to what? Bacterial invasion during that time. But we saw in the previous slides, a couple slides ago, that inside the seminal, they also have a fluid that is what? Bacteriostatic. So not only does it suppress her immune response so the sperm can get in, it protects her from bacterial invasion at the same time. <laughs> I wonder how many random genetic mistakes it took to get that right. <laughs> there. And that's what that is saying here. And whoa, that's what one of those white cells would look like swimming around on her uterus. They send out those long arms and they find these foreign invaders. In this particular picture, it's a bacteria. And they grab them, they pull them inside the cell, and they do what? Oh. Stuff them in a big bag of acid or hydrogen peroxide. And there it is. That cell's opening up. And those bacteria are goners than that. It's just wiping them out. Oh, capacitation. We've got two more things to discuss on how we get to the egg. Never heard of capacitation. And this is what it says there. Freshly ejaculated sperm are unable to fertilize eggs, secondary oocytes. Huh, we never heard that before. It says there they must undergo an activation process known as capacitation in the female genital tract. Let's drop down to the last bold print. Usually sperms are capacitated in the uterus and uterine terms, tubes by substances in the secretions of these parts of the female genital tract. Let's look at a couple slides and I'll explain all this to you. That's what this process is here. Here it is. This is a sperm. Up here on the top, we're going to talk about this acrosome. I told you it would become important. And around the outside tip of the head of the sperm is a very, very tough coat. Very, very tough coat. Because what's contained inside this acrosome are enzymes. Enzymes which are able to dissolve tissue. Dissolve tissue. And as this sperm comes up here to this egg, you notice it can't get to it. It's got to release these enzymes and dissolve these cells so that it can get up to the egg. So it can get up to the egg. And that's what this process is called. Let's look at another one. It says this. There is still another hurdle to be overcome. Sperm freshly deposited in the vagina are incapable of penetrating an oocyte. They must first be capacitated. That is, their membranes must become fragile so that the hydrolytic enzymes, that's the cell-dissolving enzymes, in their acrosomes can be released. 
Semen contain vesicles that donate cholesterol to the sperm membranes to keep them tough and intact. As sperm swim through the cervical mucus, uterus, and uterine tubes, the cholesterol is depleted and the sperm undergo a gradual capacitation for the next few hours. This is a pretty elaborate mechanism for preventing spilling of the acrosomal enzymes, but consider the alternative. If sperm had fragile acrosomal membranes, membranes while still within the male reproductive tract, they could rupture premature, prematurely, causing some degree of autolysis or self-digestion of the male reproductive system. Wow. That means you're making 300 million sperm. They all have these hydrolytic enzymes. If they broke early, they're going to attack whatever they can find, and it could cause self-digestion of the male reproductive system. Now, guys, that could ruin your day. You know? It could ruin your day. So, you have this highly dangerous substance contained in the sperm, and it's protected there. And as it swims through what? The uterus and the uterine tubes? Secretions in mom's body cause that to break down so that it, by the time it reaches the egg, it's just at the right amount to dissolve those other cells around the egg to get to it. Now, this is, these secretions are coded for information in mom's body, which are now having effect on sperm from the man. Now, how did that ever evolve? How did that ever evolve? I argue that it didn't. And then finally, we have the acrosomal reaction. Hundreds of sperm must rupture to break down the intracellular cement, rich in hyaluronic acid, that holds the granulosa cells together. What that's saying is, surrounding the egg, there's a bunch of other cells that are glued together by hyaluronic acid. This is one case that does not bear out the old adage, the early bird catches the worm. A sperm that comes along later after virtually hundreds of sperm have undergone acrosomal reactions to expose the oocyte membrane is in the best position to be the fertilizing sperm. So what that's saying is outside that egg, there's this protective coat and a bunch of sperm are going up there and they're rupturing and they're spilling their enzymes and it's slowly, slowly dissolving and it's getting away, but they don't make it in because they've, you know, they're worn out. And then, you know, that's what is happening here. Here's an egg and it's just being swarmed by these sperm 